a water clock or klepsidra Greek klepsidra from kleptine kleptine, to steel, hydor hydor, water is any timepiece in which time is measured by the regulated flow of liquid into inflow type or out from outflow type a vessel where the amount is then measured. Water clocks are one of the oldest time measuring instruments. Where and when they were first invented is not known, and given their great antiquity it may never be. The bowl-shaped outflow is the simplest form of a water clock and is known to have existed in Babylon and in Egypt around the 16th century BC. Other regions of the world, including India and China, also have early evidence of water clocks, but the earliest dates are less certain. Some authors, however, claim that water clocks appeared in China as early as 4000 BC. Some modern timepieces are called water clocks, but work differently from the ancient ones. Their timekeeping is governed by a pendulum, but they use water for other purposes, such as providing the power needed to drive the clock by using a water wheel or something similar, or by having water in their displays. The Greeks and Romans advanced water clock design to include the inflow clepsidra with an early feedback system, gearing, and escapement mechanism, which were connected to fanciful automata and resulted in improved accuracy. Further advances were made in Byzantium, Syria and Mesopotamia, where increasingly accurate water clocks incorporated complex segmental and epicyclic gearing, water wheels, and programmability, advances which eventually made their way to Europe. Independently, the Chinese developed their own advanced water clocks, incorporating gears, escapement mechanisms, and water wheels, passing their ideas on to Korea and Japan. Some water clock designs were developed independently and some knowledge was transferred through the spread of trade. These early water clocks were calibrated with a sundial. While never reaching a level of accuracy comparable to today's standards of timekeeping, the water clock was the most accurate and commonly used timekeeping device for millennia, until it was replaced by more accurate pendulum clocks in 17th century Europe. A water clock uses a flow of water to measure time. If viscosity is neglected, the physical principle required to study such clocks is Torricelli's law. There are two types of water clocks, inflow and outflow. In an outflow water clock, a container is filled with water, and the water is drained slowly and evenly out of the container. This container has markings that are used to show the passage of time. As the water leaves the container, an observer can see where the water is level with the lines and tell how much time has passed. An inflow water clock works in basically the same way, except instead of flowing out of the container, the water is filling up the marked container. As the container fills, the observer can see where the water meets the lines and tell how much time has passed. <laughs> Regional development <laughs> China. In ancient China, as well as throughout East Asia, water clocks were very important in the study of astronomy and astrology. The oldest written reference dates the use of the water clock in China to the 6th century BC. From about 200 BC onwards, the outflow clepsidra was replaced almost everywhere in China by the inflow type with an indicator rod borne on a float. The Han Dynasty philosopher and politician Huan Tan 40 BC, AD 30, a secretary at the court in charge of Clepsidrae, wrote that he had to compare Clepsidrae with sundials because of how temperature and humidity affected their accuracy, demonstrating that the effects of evaporation, as well as of temperature on the speed at which water flows, were known at this time. In 976, the Song Dynasty military engineer and astronomer Zhang Sixen addressed the problem of the water in Clepsidrae freezing in cold weather by using liquid mercury instead. Again, instead of using water, the early Ming Dynasty engineer Zan Ziyuan c. created a sand-driven wheel clock, improved upon by Zhou Shushui c. .The use of clepsidrae to drive mechanisms illustrating astronomical phenomena began with the Han Dynasty polymath Zhang Heng in 117, who also employed a waterwheel. Zhang Heng was the first in China to add an extra compensating tank between the reservoir and the inflow vessel, which solved the problem of the falling pressure head in the reservoir tank. Zhang's ingenuity led to the creation by the Tang Dynasty mathematician and engineer Yi Xing and Liang Lingzhen in 725 of a clock driven by a waterwheel linkwork escapement mechanism. 
The same mechanism would be used by the Song dynasty polymath Su Song in 1088 to power his astronomical clock tower, as well as a chain drive. Su Song's clock tower, over 30 feet (9.1 meters) tall, possessed a bronze-power-driven armillary sphere for observations, an automatically rotating celestial globe, and five front panels with doors that permitted the viewing of changing mannequins, which rang bells or gongs, and held tablets indicating the hour or other special times of the day. In the 2000s, in Beijing's Drum Tower, an outflow clepsydra is operational and displayed for tourists. It is connected to automata so that every quarter hour a small brass statue of a man claps his symbols. <inaudible> <inaudible> India N. Kamaswara Rao suggested that pots excavated from Mohenjo-daro may have been used as water clocks. They are tapered at the bottom, have a hole on the side, and are similar to the utensil used to perform abhishekam pour holy water on Shivalingam. N. Narahari Achar and Subhash Kak suggest that the use of the water clock in ancient India is mentioned in the Atharvaveda from the 2nd millennium BC. Gata or Kapala or water clock is referred to in Jyotisha Vedanga, where the amount of water that measures a nadika is mentioned. A more developed form of the klepsidra is described in Chapter XIII, 23 of the Siddhanta. At Nalanda, a Buddhist university, four hours a day and four hours at night were measured by a water clock, which consisted of a copper bowl holding two large floats in a larger bowl filled with water. The bowl was filled with water from a small hole at its bottom, it sank when completely filled and was marked by the beating of a drum at daytime. The amount of water added varied with the seasons and this clock was operated by the students of the university. The description of a water clock in astrologer Varahimira's Pankasadantika 505 adds further detail to the account given in the Siddhanta. The description given by mathematician Brahmagupta in his work Brahmasvatasiddhanta matches with that given in the Siddhanta. Astronomer Lalacharya describes this instrument in detail. In practice, the dimensions were determined by experiment. Babylon. In Babylon, water clocks were of the outflow type and were cylindrical in shape. Use of the water clock as an aid to astronomical calculations dates back to the old Babylonian period c. 2000 c. 1600 BC. While there are no surviving water clocks from the Mesopotamian region, most evidence of their existence comes from writings on clay tablets. Two collections of tablets, for example, are the Enuma Anu and Lil 1600 to 1200 BC and the Mul APIN 7th century BC. In these tablets, water clocks are used in reference to payment of the night and day watches guards. These clocks were unique as they did not have an indicator such as hands as are typically used today or grooved notches as were used in Egypt. Instead, these clocks measured time by the weight of water flowing from the volume was measured in capacity units called QA. The weight, mana, the Greek unit for about one pound, is the weight of water in a water clock. In Babylonian times, time was measured with temporal hours. So, as seasons changed, so did the length of a day. To define the length of a night watch at the summer solstice, one had to pour two mana of water into a cylindrical clepsydra, its emptying indicated the end of the watch. One sixth of a mana had to be added each succeeding half month. At equinox, three mana had to be emptied in order to correspond to one watch, and four mana were emptied for each watch of the winter solstitial night. Egypt The oldest water clock of which there is physical evidence dates to c. 1417–1379 BC, during the reign of Amenhotep III where it was used in the temple of Amen-ri at Karnak. The oldest documentation of the water clock is the tomb inscription of the 16th century BC Egyptian court official Amenemhet, which identifies him as its inventor. These simple water clocks, which were of the outflow type, were stone vessels with sloping sides that allowed water to drip at a nearly constant rate from a small hole near the bottom. There were twelve separate columns with consistently spaced markings on the inside to measure the passage of hours as the water level reached them. The columns were for each of the twelve months to allow for the variations of the seasonal hours. 
These clocks were used by priests to determine the time at night so that the temple rites and sacrifices could be performed at the correct hour. These clocks may have been used in daylight as well. <inaudible> Persia According to Callisthenes, the Persians were using water clocks in 328 BC to ensure a just and exact distribution of water from khanates to their shareholders for agricultural irrigation. The use of water clocks in Iran, especially in Zabad, dates back to 500 BC. Later they were also used to determine the exact holy days of pre-Islamic religions, such as the Nowruz, Chela, or Yalda the shortest, longest, and equal length days and nights of the years. The water clocks used in Iran were one of the most practical ancient tools for timing the yearly calendar. The water clock, or fenjan, was the most accurate and commonly used timekeeping device for calculating the amount or the time that a farmer must take water from a khanat or well for irrigation, until it was replaced by more accurate current clocks. Persian water clocks were a practical and useful tool for the khanat's shareholders to calculate the length of time they could divert water to their farm. The khanat was the only water source for agriculture and irrigation so a just and fair water distribution was very important. Therefore, a very fair and clever old person was elected to be the manager of the water clock Mirab, and at least two full-time managers were needed to control and observe the number of fenjons and announce the exact time during the days and nights. The fenjon consisted of a large pot full of water and a bowl with a small hole in the center. When the bowl became full of water, it would sink into the pot, and the manager would empty the bowl and again put it on the top of the water in the pot. He would record the number of times the bowl sank by putting small stones into a jar. The place where the clock was situated, and its managers, were collectively known as Kane Fenjan. Usually this would be the top floor of a public house, with west and east facing windows to show the time of sunset and sunrise. There was also another time-keeping tool named a staryab or astrolabe, but it was mostly used for superstitious beliefs and was not practical for use as a farmer's calendar. The Zebad Gonabad water clock was in use until 1965 when it was substituted by modern clocks. <laughs> Greco-Roman world The word klepsidra comes from the Greek meaning water thief. The Greeks considerably advanced the water clock by tackling the problem of the diminishing flow. They introduced several types of the inflow clepsidra, one of which included the earliest feedback control system. Tejabius invented an indicator system typical for later clocks such as the dial and pointer. The Roman engineer Vitruvius described early alarm clocks, working with gongs or trumpets. A commonly used water clock was the simple outflow clepsidra. This small earthenware vessel had a hole in its side near the base. In both Greek and Roman times, this type of clepsidra was used in courts for allocating periods of time to speakers. In important cases, such as when a person's life was at stake, it was filled completely, but for more minor cases, only partially. If proceedings were interrupted for any reason, such as to examine documents, the hole in the clepsidra was stopped with wax until the speaker was able to resume his pleading. Clepsidra Springhouse of the Athenian Acropolis Just northeast of the entrance to the Acropolis of Athens there was a famous natural spring named Clepsidra. It is mentioned by Aristophanes in Lysistrata lines 910 and other ancient literary sources. A fountain house was built on the site c. 470–460 BC, it was of simple rectangular construction with a draw basin and paved court. Clepsidrae for keeping time In the 4th century BC, the Clepsidra is known to have been used as a stopwatch for imposing a time limit on clients' visits in Athenian brothels. Slightly later, in the early 3rd century BC, the Hellenistic physician Herophilos employed a portable Clepsidra on his house visits in Alexandria for measuring his patient's pulse beats. By comparing the rate by age group with empirically obtained data sets, he was able to determine the intensity of the disorder. Between 270 BC and AD 500, Hellenistic, Tejabius, hero of Alexandria, Archimedes, and Roman horologists and astronomers were developing more elaborate mechanized water clocks. 
The added complexity was aimed at regulating the flow and at providing fancier displays of the passage of time. For example, some water clocks rang bells and gongs, while others opened doors and windows to show figurines of people, or moved pointers, and dials. Some even displayed astrological models of the universe. The 3rd century BC engineer Philo of Byzantium referred in his works to water clocks already fitted with an escapement mechanism, the earliest known of its kind. The biggest achievement of the invention of clepsydrae during this time, however, was by Tejabius with his incorporation of gears and a dial indicator to automatically show the time as the lengths of the days changed throughout the year, because of the temporal timekeeping used during his day. Also, a Greek astronomer, Andronicus of Cyrus, supervised the construction of his horologion, known today as the Tower of the Winds, in the Athens marketplace or Agora in the first half of the 1st century BC. This octagonal clock tower showed scholars and shoppers both sundials and mechanical hour indicators. It featured a 24-hour mechanized clepsydra and indicators for the eight winds from which the tower got its name, and it displayed the seasons of the year and astrological dates and periods. Topic. Medieval Islamic world In the medieval Islamic world the use of water clocks has its roots from Archimedes during the rise of Alexandria in Egypt and continues on through Byzantium. The water clocks by Persian engineer al-Jazari, however, are credited for going well beyond anything that had preceded them. In al Jazari's 1206 treatise, he describes one of his water clocks, the elephant clock. The clock recorded the passage of temporal hours, which meant that the rate of flow had to be changed daily to match the uneven length of days throughout the year. To accomplish this, the clock had two tanks, the top tank was connected to the time indicating mechanisms and the bottom was connected to the flow control regulator. Basically, at daybreak the tap was opened and water flowed from the top tank to the bottom tank via a float regulator that maintained a constant pressure in the receiving tank. The most sophisticated water-powered astronomical clock was al Jazari's castle clock, considered by some to be an early example of a programmable analog computer, in 1206. It was a complex device that was about 11 feet meters high, and had multiple functions alongside timekeeping. It included a display of the zodiac and the solar and lunar orbits, and a pointer in the shape of the crescent moon which traveled across the top of a gateway, moved by a hidden cart and causing automatic doors to open, each revealing a mannequin, every hour. It was possible to reprogram the length of day and night in order to account for the changing lengths of day and night throughout the year, and it also featured five musician automata who automatically play music when moved by levers operated by a hidden camshaft attached to a water wheel. Other components of the castle clock included a main reservoir with a float, a float chamber and flow regulator, plate and valve trough, two pulleys, crescent disc displaying the zodiac, and two falcon automata dropping balls into vases. The first water clocks to employ complex segmental and epicyclic gearing was invented earlier by the Arab engineer Ibn Caliph al Muradi in Islamic Iberia c. 1000. His water clocks were driven by water wheels, as was also the case for several Chinese water clocks in the 11th century. Comparable water clocks were built in Damascus and Fez. The latter Dar al remains until today and its mechanism has been reconstructed. The first European clock to employ these complex gears was the astronomical clock created by Giovanni da Dondi in c. 1365. Like the Chinese, Arab engineers at the time also developed an escapement mechanism which they employed in some of their water clocks. The escapement mechanism was in the form of a constant head system, while heavy floats were used as weights. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Korea. In 1434, during the Joseon or Joseon dynasty, Chang Yongsil or Jang Young Sil, Jang Young Sil in Korean palace guard and later chief court engineer, constructed the Jagyongnu self-striking water clock or striking clepsydra for King Sejong. What made the Jagyongnu self-striking or automatic was the use of jack work mechanisms, by which three wooden figures jacks struck objects to signal the time. This innovation no longer required the reliance of human workers, known as rooster men, to constantly replenish it. By 1554, the water clock spread from Korea to Japan. Water clocks were used and improved upon throughout Asia well into the 15th century.
Topic: <laughs> Modern designs. Only a few modern water clocks exist today. In 1979, French scientist Bernard Gittin began creating his time flow clocks, which are a modern-day approach to the historical version. His unique glass tube designs can be found in over 30 locations throughout the world, including one at Nemo Science Museum in Amsterdam. Europa centers the clock of flowing time in Berlin, Center Commercial Millennis in Guadeloupe, the giant water clock at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis in Indianapolis, Indiana, the Abbotsford International Airport, formerly at Seven Oaks Shopping Center in Abbotsford, British Columbia, and the Shopping Iguatemi in Sao Paulo and Porto Alegre, Brazil. Gittin's design relies on gravity powering multiple siphons in the same principle as the Pythagorean cup, for example, after the water level in the minute or hour display tubes is reached, an overflow tube starts to act as a siphon and thus empties the display tube. Actual time keeping is done by a calibrated pendulum powered by a water stream piped from the clock's reservoir. The pendulum has a carefully constructed container attached to it, this measures the water that is then poured into the display system. This means that strictly speaking these are not water clocks. The water is used to power the pendulum and to show the time in the display system. There are other modern designs of water clocks, including the Royal Gorge Water Clock in Colorado, the Woodgrove Mall in Nanaimo, British Columbia, and the Hornsby Water Clock in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> Temperature, water viscosity, and clock accuracy When viscosity can be neglected, the outflow rate of the water is governed by Torricelli's law, or more generally, by Bernoulli's principle. Viscosity will dominate the outflow rate if the water flows out through a nozzle that is sufficiently long and thin, as given by the hagen poiseuille equation. Approximately, the flow rate is for such design inversely proportional to the viscosity, which depends on the temperature. Liquids generally become less viscous as the temperature increases. In the case of water, the viscosity varies by a factor of about 7 between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. Thus, a water clock with such a nozzle would run about 7 times faster at 100 degrees Celsius than at 0 degrees Celsius. Water is about 25% more viscous at 20 degrees Celsius than at 30 degrees Celsius, and a variation in temperature of 1 degree Celsius, in this room temperature range, produces a change of viscosity of about 2%. Therefore, a water clock with such a nozzle that keeps good time at some given temperature would gain or lose about half an hour per day if it were 1 degree Celsius warmer or cooler. To make it keep time within 1 minute per day would require its temperature to be controlled within 1 30th of a degree Celsius about 1 17th of a degree Fahrenheit. There is no evidence that this was done in antiquity, so ancient water clocks with sufficiently thin and long nozzles unlike the modern pendulum controlled one described above cannot have been reliably accurate by modern standards. Note, however, that while modern timepieces may not be reset for long periods, water clocks were likely reset every day, when refilled, based on a sundial, so the cumulative error would not have been great. See also Hourglass Connat Connats of Gonabid Topic Notes Topic Bibliography External links The Clock of Flowing Time in Berlin NIST, A Walk Through Time Bernard Gittin's Time Flow Clocks Egypt's Water Clock Clepsydra. Encyclopedia Americana, 1920. A Brief History of Clocks, from Thales to Ptolemy The Indianapolis Children's Museum Water Clock Nanaimo, BC Water Clock Shockwave applet, Tejabius water clock Reese's Universal Dictionary article on Clepsydra, 1819 The Royal Gorge Bridge water clock Clepsydra. New International Encyclopedia, 1905 The Mechanical Water Clock of Ibn al-Haytham <laughs>